Good morning. Welcome to a Monterey Church of Christ online service. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Thank you for joining us. Um, in, in, in Paul's second letter to Timothy, he thanked God for all the ladies in his life. Uh, he says, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. As night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Lord, I want to thank you for all the things that you do for us. Thank you for the mothers that are out there. Lord, I ask that you guide every, everyone to walk the path that we're supposed to. Lord, thank you for, for the things that you've allowed us to have. Thank you for this church. Thank you for... Uh, the, the online worship services that we are able to, to provide. And thank you for everybody that joins in with us. In your son Jesus' name, amen. All right. First song we're going to do this morning is In the Sweet By and By. It's an old gospel song, and it's, always, it's a great song as well. So even though we're all at home, you know, we're not all here physically, we can still praise Jesus even chairs, you know, it's always a good time. There's a land that is fairer than day, and my faith we can see it afar. song we're going to do this morning is Reckless Love. I 
last song we're going to do this morning is called Revelation Song. It's a very, very powerful song. And the uh, lyrics come straight out of the Bible. But uh, I believe it comes out of uh, the book of Revelation in chapter 4. And it's talking about the four living creatures and, and uh, what John saw. You know, it's very powerful stuff. And it's straight up Jesus coming. <laughs> so be sure to sing this one. Such a name is power.
As we prepare for communion, I'd like to start out uh, with 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. When Jesus was asked what was the most important commandment of all, he answered the question with, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. But then he also replied, and the second is like it. <clears throat> Love your neighbor as yourself. So as Christians, it's pretty much a given that we follow the first commandment wholeheartedly, right? We believe in Jesus, the Son of God, who was brought to this world to die a brutal death for us wretched sinners, right? <clears throat> we love Jesus. We live for Jesus. We serve him in every way we can. We love Jesus, but what about his flock? His flock, you know, as in human beings, the human race, your fellow American, your neighbor Ralphie with his six obnoxious kids and that mutt he owns that keeps pooping in your yard. Sometimes the Ralphies of this world drive us crazy or make us angry or even break our hearts. Hey, maybe it could even be you that's the Ralphie. I don't know. I do know that sometimes it can be hard to love your neighbor, especially if it's a complete stranger you've just come across, your coworker that gives you a hard time at work, or the lady that cuts you off at your next exit. Even though people like this can upset and frustrate us, we have to remember this. Jesus didn't just die for you. You should know that he died for the people that drive you nuts every day, the Ralphies. Jesus died for them too. There are plenty of people that drive me nuts every day. And you know, I may look perfect, and I mean, I am a handsome man. Mmm. But sometimes I lose my temper with people. And for that brief moment, I forget all about the second, you know, commandment that he stated, love your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, after I cool off and I realize how silly it was to blow up and lose my cool and stoop to that level of spiritual immaturity, that isn't where we should be as Christians. When I was a kid, I was pretty obnoxious as most 13-year-old boys are. I'd cut up and act out, you name it, I did it. And I remember uh, Mr. Jeff and Miss Jill Britt teaching our junior high class on Wednesday nights. And I still am shocked to this very day that they didn't straight up lay the smack down on me every time that I acted out. You know, I learned something from Mr. Jeff, though. Each time I would cut up, speak out of turn, or argue with someone, he would quote the book of James. And he would always say, Max, you need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. You know, that verse has stuck with me ever since I was a kid. Each time I get annoyed with somebody or get super mad, those verses hit me like a ton of bricks, and I have to take a step back and realize that nobody's perfect. And we need to slow down and not get all high and mighty with someone that we disagree with because we're all in the same boat. We're all sinners, and that's why Jesus died for each and every one of us. Instead of 
letting petty squabbles or dissensions come between us fellow Christians. We need to give up our selfish ways and love one another as Christ loves us. As Christians, we are supposed to be like Christ. How can we possibly love Jesus if we can't love what he died for? So as we take communion, I ask you to remember not only Jesus' sacrifice for us, but also for the people, including you, that he died for. We have to love one another and build each other up in the body of Christ. So I'll end on a verse from Proverbs. As iron sharpens iron, so one sharpens another. And that's uh, Proverbs 27, verse 17. God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending your son to this world to come and die for us, Lord, because we didn't deserve that. And we truly thank you that you were willing to do that for us. As we break bread and uh, drink our juice, Lord, I just pray that we remember what was done and that we remember our fellow Christians as well. Because in times like this, we need each other. And like Proverbs says, iron sharpens iron. We have to be there for each other. We have to love one another truly. We can't let something like this break us apart, Lord, and cause trouble among us, Lord, because we're supposed to be the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. And forgive us for the many sins we've done, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. I'm glad that uh, you're able to join us here this morning at Monterey Church of Christ as we celebrate Mother's Day. It looks a little bit different. Um, this is unlike any Mother's Day I've ever celebrated before. I can always remember. I have fond memories of Mother's Day. I remember my grandmother would always make these corsages for us to make, to give to our moms. And she, I remember her making these things out of these real flowers. She'd keep them in the ref her refrigerator, and then we got to give them to our moms as if we had made those things. <laughs> that was always really cool. But let's give it up for mamas. How about that? Yes, give it up for your mama. You know why? Because your mama's got your back, right? In fact, your mama, she, she wiped your backside, she wiped your nose, and she wiped your face, all with the same rag sometimes. I know I had to figure that out the hard way one <laughs> one time but yeah your mama's got your back mamas can handle things you know i can't even dream of there is a reason that the lord saw fit to put women in charge of having the babies the reason is because men wouldn't put up with all that <laughs> you know i had a meltdown the other day when i stepped on a lego barefoot i cannot imagine going through like 20 hours of labor that just that doesn't compute to me men can't handle getting a splinter in our fingers, much less having to go through all that. But ladies, ladies will take off of work. They'll go and they'll have the kid and then they'll be back at work the next day. They're tough. <laughs> Mamas are tough. I love Mother's Day. This is what I actually got my mama for Mother's Day uh, this year. Yeah, it says, if, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Happy Mother's Day, love your second born. I love that. <laughs> my sister didn't like that too much, but that's okay. It was for my mom. It wasn't for my sister. 
Our text today picks up in uh, verse 3 of chapter 2 of First John. And it kind of goes along with Mother's Day. You know, I didn't plan it that way. It's just kind of where we left off in the text. So we're going to go ahead and read that, and then we'll jump right in uh, to what we're going to talk about today. Starting at verse 3 of First John, do it this. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know uh, we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, I'm not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you've heard, yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. The cool thing about this passage is if you look deep enough, and we're going to unpack that this morning, but if you look deep enough, you'll see how these things go hand in hand with Mother's Day and the values that our mothers tried to instill in us. And the first one that I want to take a look at, the first value you'll see in, the, in this passage is deference. I had to look that word up. <laughs> it's deference. Uh, it says, what did he say in verse 3? He says, that we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Deference is just a fancy word for obedience, right? That's something that our mothers tried to instill in us was obedience. That's the first thing that John's talking about uh, in this passage here is deference or obedience. That's something that all mamas try to instill in their children. And I want to tell you something. My kid's mother, Zanita, is a pro at this. <laughs> she invents ways of ensuring compliance. I'll say that again. She invents ways of ensuring compliance compliance for a long time poor emma had so much taken away that she had nothing in her room but a bed and some clothes <laughs> well, you know that's what had to happen to ensure compliance to ensure obedience to instill obedience in her she had nothing in her room but uh, a bed and some clothes and now if you know emma she is the sweetest thing now tommy i don't know what zanita did to tommy but that child never seems to need correcting because he punishes himself and liam bless his soul <laughs> we're not going to talk about him Woo! but a mother's love instills obedience in her children in the same way Jesus' love, it, it acts very much in the same way. His love is indescribable. It's crazy. It's reckless. It's agape love. That's the same type of love our mamas have for us. It's crazy, reckless, agape love. You see, it instills a love for him so deep that we comply to the standard by which he wants us to live. This is what Matthew chapter 10 says. Starting in verse 29, it says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. You see, that is just an idea of how much God and Jesus cares for us. What does it say? The numbers of hairs on your head are numbered. He knows how many hairs are on your head. To me, that sounds like a guy who loves. That sounds like a guy who cares. That sounds like a guy, you know, all of the above. <laughs> it says not even a sparrow will fall to the ground outside of the Father's care. Not even a sparrow. And you know that we're worth more than a sparrow. You see, it's not, and here's the point, it's not that we have to obey the Lord it's that we get to obey the Lord. We get to obey Jesus. Here's the point of all this. In John chapter 14, 
It says this, starting in verse 23. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to them and make our home with him. He says, Anyone who loves me, right? Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Do you know why? It's simple. It's because they cannot help to, right? They cannot help to love him because of what he's done. What has he done? Well, he laid down his life. He took him who knew no sin, the Bible says, took sin, right? He took it on himself, and he carried it with him up a hill, and he nailed it to a cross. How can you not love a guy like that? How can you not love someone who, despite being creator of the universe, despite <laughs> having all of time, space, and matter in his hands, came to the earth and humbled himself, being a man? And not only that, he still, even though he did create all of this and put it all into existence, he still cares for each and every one of us to get involved with our everyday life. How can you not love that crazy, reckless, indescribable love? See, that's why we comply. That's why we have obedience is because of his love. We cannot help to. He loves us so much. It's like our mama. She loves us so much we cannot help but to love her back. Well, the second thing that he talks about here, first one was the deference. The next thing he talks about is the doctrine, right? He says, I'm, I'm not writing you a new command, but an old command. That's something our mamas instill in us, right? Doctrine, another word for doctrine is values, right? She instills values in us, she, she wants us to be good people. She wants to, to instill character in us. The definition of character is the way you act when no one else is looking, right? That's how you know you have good character. You see, we all have values or doctrine, if you will, that was instilled in us by our mama. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know that your mama expects you to act a certain way when you go into the store, Right? At least mine did. And if you did not act a certain way, whew. And I'm like, when you go into the store today, you're not going to ask for cereal. You're not going to ask for a toy. You're not going to ask for candy. We're going in there to get some meat to make for supper tonight. I don't want to hear you asking for all of this, 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 and this. Yes, you can push the buggy. That's fine. But if that buggy runs up on my hill, something bad's going to happen. You see, we know how to act in the store because our mama taught us how to act in the store and we knew that if we did not act a certain way there would be consequences i know it's a funny way of putting it but we were also taught how to treat people right you treat people a certain way we were taught how to treat our possessions you know we've our, our parents got us this thing and so they taught us how to care for it and how how to take care of it and you don't just you just don't treat your possessions in a certain way. We were taught how to treat our relationships. These are all values that were instilled in us by our parents and by our moms. You see, you knew what was expected of you. Well, the same is with Jesus. We who love him, we know exactly what he expects. His values have been instilled in us in Matthew chapter 22. They asked him, they said in verse 36, they said, Teacher, which, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. I like that phrase. They hang on these two commandments. You see, that's his value. That's his doctrine. That is the ultimate doctrine. Love God, love your neighbor. That kind of brings us to the last thing that John is talking about uh, in this passage, and it's found in verse 9. The last thing, of course, do unto others. He says anyone, and he says, anyone who hates a brother or a sister is still in the darkness. I want to kind of camp out here for a minute. Because there are two recurring themes throughout the New Testament. Number one is, of course, the gospel message. I mean, that's, 
you know, that's why the New Testament was written, is because of the gospel message. But the second theme that is recurring throughout the New Testament is not only the gospel, but what you do with it. Okay? See, we have the gospel message, but I think maybe even more importantly, what you do with the gospel message. And more specifically, what the New Testament talks about is how we conduct ourselves in a way that we treat others so that they can hear the gospel message. Did you catch that? The New Testament talks about how we conduct ourselves and that we are to conduct ourselves in a way that and in, in how we treat others so that they can hear the gospel message. Jesus talked extensively on the subject, you know. And he, he, he showed people, he not only talked, but he showed people like when he, he was with the woman at the well or whenever he went to Zacchaeus' house, a tax collector, you know. He showed people how you were supposed to treat others. But not only Jesus is teaching, but take a look at the book of Acts, you know. That's exactly what the entire book of Acts is all about. Holy Spirit comes down on them like tongues of fire. And they get up and, and Peter has this big message in Acts chapter 2. And what is he doing? He's telling the gospel to other people. He's conducting himself in a way to where other people see that. And they say, man, I want to know what he's got and what happened. 3,000 were baptized and added their number that day. Well, then what happened? Well, the church continues to meet together. They met in each other's homes. And then one day, Peter and John, they go to the temple there. And what happens? They interact with another person. The guy that was uh, lame, the crippled guy. They, they, they give the gospel to him. They give Jesus Christ to him. They heal him of his, his, uh, his, his condition that he had. He couldn't walk. And so he gets up and he runs ahead of them into the temple. And they're dealing with other people. They deal with the people in the temple. Then they get up in front of the, the Sanhedrin because they arrest them because they didn't like the fact that they healed this man in Jesus' name. And what they do? They deal with the people uh, <laughs> that are in charge, the, the, the priests and the, and the teachers of the law. And they, it says that they, they realized that they were unschooled, they were ordinary men, and they were astonished, but they realized that these men had been with Jesus. The whole book of Acts is all about that. Those are just the first few chapters and that's not to mention what happens whenever paul gets the gospel message right when he goes into his missionary journeys and when he's in you know in thessalonica whenever he's in athens i love when he's in athens and he's on mars hill and he's talking he, he could look around and he sees all these different idols right and he says look i even see that you have an idol to what an unknown god let me tell you about this guy Philip, when he came up on the Ethiopian eunuch, I know I'm backtracking here, I should have already talked about this, but when Philip comes upon the, 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 the Ethiopian eunuch, or the Ethiopian eunuch comes upon Philip, <laughs> what does Philip do? He didn't say, man, you should already know this, or I'm not explaining this to you. No. He tells him what it means. He says, this is the guy that he's talking about. This is Jesus Christ. The Ethiopian eunuch had been reading these stories and and uh, Philip explains it to him, and he says, "What shouldn't I be baptized? Well, here's some water. Shouldn't I be baptized? What did Philip say? No, you need to learn a little bit more first. No. He said, all right, let's baptize you. All throughout the book of Acts, it's people interacting with people and sharing the gospel. Let's read this verse again. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or a sister is still in darkness. Is that not something that mama's taught us at a very early age, right? You see, the gospel is about others, not us. This is very basic stuff. Sometimes basic stuff is what we need the most. <laughs> the, one of the first things our mothers taught us was what? To share, right? Share your toys with your sister. When you go to school and you're playing in the centers, you have to, you have to share with the other kids at school when you're in kindergarten and stuff like that. That is one of the very basic things that our mothers taught us. Well, Sometimes some of the basic stuff, that is the best stuff because that is exactly what the gospel is. 
sharing with others. I'll go ahead and end with this. On Mark, or excuse me, on February 4th, 2014, Mark Zuckerberg launched the Facebook. That's what it was called back then, the Facebook. Facebook membership was initially limited to Harvard students. Membership was then expanded to the Ivy League universities, to MIT, and to higher education institutions in the Boston area, and then various other universities like Baylor was one in the beginning and stuff like that. And lastly, it was expanded to high school students just as long as you had a .edu email. Now, in its infancy, Facebook was noted for its exclusivity. However, on September 26th in 2006, it's a long time ago. <laughs> wow. September 26, 2006, Facebook opened to everyone at least 13 years of age with a valid email address, and the rest is history. You know why? It's because exclusivity and being exclusive is not as good as being inclusive, right? Inclusive is better than exclusive. Facebook is one of the largest corporations in the world today. One of the biggest influencers of opinion, one of the biggest influencers of people in the world today. Why? Because it's better to be inclusive rather than exclusive. In its infancy, it was exclusive, right? But now it's inclusive. And most of you are watching me from Facebook right now because it's inclusive. The same can be said with our faith. The law. The law was exclusive. You had to be circumcised, right? The law was exclusive. Christianity, the gospel, that's inclusive. Judaism, exclusive. Christianity, inclusive. Inclusive is way better than exclusive. Inclusive says, you know what? You know what I have? It's, it's so good, this life-saving grace of Jesus Christ, that I want you to have it. It's not saying, you know what, you need to do this, 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 and this. That's what the law was. You had to do this, you had to do that, you had to do this, and you had to do that. In fact, that's what the Samaritan woman was so worried about in John chapter 4. She said, you guys come, and, and, and said we had to worship on this mountain, and then we had to go and worship the temple. But guess what, I can't go and worship at the temple. I'm a Samaritan, you won't let me. Well, it wasn't Jesus that wouldn't let her. It was the Jews. And Jesus told her, he said, don't worry. Because a time is coming whenever we're not going to worship on this mountain. We're not going to worship in some temple. No, a time is coming when we're going to worship in spirit and in truth. The time is now, folks. He also offered her something that day at the well. She was going to get thirsty again, he said, but he offered her something else. He offered her living water. Living water inclusive. It's not exclusive. Living water is inclusive because it comes from Jesus Christ. I know that times have been tough relatively, I guess, <laughs> because we've been separated from each other for a, quite a while now, two months. The last time that we were able to meet together was March the 15th, and we had a big prayer service. It was really cool the way that that ended up. You know, the, the president called for a, a day of prayer, and then we decided to do that here at the church, and that was the last day we were able to meet together, and that was pretty cool. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know this. Jesus said that in this world we will have trouble. Yeah, we will. But he also told us not to worry because he's overcome the world. Here's the thing. The gospel message is inclusive. That means me, that means you, and everyone we come into contact with. What are you doing with it? Are you trying to keep it to yourself? Or are you going to do what your mother taught you to do oh so many years ago? Are you going to share it with others? God bless you guys. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>